All right, the day is here. Tom DeLonge's new album, demos, whatever the hell you want to call it, is out. So, <clears throat> frankly, I kind of forgot all about it, and I'm pretty much doing this review just because I know a lot of people are going to be asking for it, so, you know, I'll do what I can. You know, I've been a big Blink fan for a very long time, and, you know can't really say I'm really a big fan of the things that have happened, you know, over the past couple months, but, you know, shit happens, and what are you going to do? So, I definitely wrote down quite a bit of notes, and I just wanted, you know, give you guys, you know, the best review that I could give, and to really try and be as unbiased as possible, and try to at least find the good in it, as well as the bad, and not just focus on one or the other. So I'm just going to go song by song for right now, and I'll kind of do like an overview later on. So I'm just going to start with Suburban Kings. I'm kind of going out of order right now. I don't really have them in order, but I figure it doesn't really matter. Um, <clears throat> one thing I didn't really care for was the, the Tommy needs this, Tommy needs that, whatever lyrics in it. I thought that was kind of cheesy. Um... The verses themselves, I didn't really care for, but I thought the chorus was actually pretty good. You know, I, I did like how the chorus felt and how big it was. You know, I, I thought it was way better than the verses, and um, I feel like uh, the pre-choruses were, were good, too. You know, had, like, a good build-up uh, to the chorus. So that was definitely, you know, something that I liked, and... Um, you know, I had a good, like, rise and fall, you know, through, like, the whole song. You know, it's got, like, the, you know, the quiet kind of verses, and then it gets a little, a little bigger with the pre-chorus and, you know, the big chorus. I mean, he pretty much rinses and repeats that same formula for almost every song he has, but, <clears throat> you know, people tend to stick to what works, I guess. Um, you know, I'm going to write something on here real quick. Um, I didn't really care for the bridge in this song particularly. I thought it was pretty weak. All right, next song is uh, Golden Showers and what was it? Golden, I forget what it was called. Let me see. Golden Showers in the Golden State. Um, I really didn't like the intro riff. I thought it was pretty weak. Um, but, you know, it sounded pretty good once, like, the rhythm and everything else kicked in. So, I mean, you know, it definitely got better. Um, but the guitar by itself, like, just that little lead riff, I was left wanting more, for sure. Um, he's definitely written catchier riffs like that, and I feel like that's just kind of, like, the first thing that popped in his head. Um, you know, I get that it's a joke song, you know. It's something that, you know, they've done for a very long time, but I feel like... It's this one along with some of his other ones. I feel like it's just him trying to reach out to fans that he lost and try and bring them back, because you know, you know, there were fans that really liked their joke songs and stuff like that. And I feel like it's just him trying to be like, oh, you know, I can be how I was when I was twenty five, and I can be that funny guy again. But you know, I feel like it's a little forced feeling and I, I don't know it doesn't really feel genuine like some of the older stuff does I mean maybe it's just because I'm used to the way Tom's been for the last 10 years I don't know um and Jesus Christ yeah we get it you love California we get it it's better than every other state in the world uh next song this is uh endless summer an endless summer but yeah um I thought the the verses and the choruses were pretty cool um, but the song as a whole, I feel like it jumped around a lot, and, um, <clears throat> it honestly felt like there were some parts that were meant to be Angels and Airwaves songs, and then there were some parts that were meant to be Blink songs, He just kind of mashed them together, and didn't really try to make them flow that well, uh, because there's, like, some really synthy type parts, and then just straight up just guitar, rock sort of parts, and then it jumps back to, like, a synthy part, and it doesn't really feel like it flows very well to me um, yeah so it doesn't really just sound like a cohesive song it feels like it's just a mash 
So I don't know. That that's how I feel. Um, and the bridge is boring. Landscapes. Overall, I mean, I thought you know it sounded pretty cool, but it's just filler. <laughs> to be quite honest, I really feel like it had no point being on that album, and I feel like he might as well have just put it on, you know, the Last Angels and Airwaves album or something. You know, I feel like there was really no point for it being on here. Um, <clears throat> next song is Animals. The intro literally made me laugh. I don't even remember what he says, but like he kind of whispers something and it made me laugh pretty good cuz I feel like I feel like Tom takes himself way too seriously and I feel like he thinks way too highly of himself as an artist and I don't know. It it made me cringe a little bit. Uh it definitely feels like a reject from Dreamwalker. I feel like it was you know, like a song that was meant for that album and it never made the cut, and so he's just like, fuck it, let's just throw it on, I'll just throw it on my solo album or whatever. Yeah, that's just, like, exactly how it feels to me. Um, overall, I mean, I think the song is pretty cool. I mean, I'm not gonna lie. It's definitely different from what he usually does, and, you know, those sort of songs, you know, I, I enjoy songs like that. Um, so, I mean, it, it was, you know, it was pretty cool overall, but, yeah, I definitely feel like... Um, I feel like it was definitely meant for Dreamwalker initially, but it just didn't get there. All right, and the next next few songs are the ones that you know we've heard for a month or two already. Um, New World, you know, you guys have probably heard me say enough about New World already, but you know, um, overall, I feel like it sounds really flat. I feel like it was a bit rushed, and although I do like the chorus. I feel like everything else in the song just kind of brings it down. Um, even the pre-chorus a little bit, I like. Um, so the pre-chorus and chorus are pretty good, but I feel like the bridge, the intro, just aren't that good. I, mean, I feel like they're just really boring. <clears throat> Invisible Parade. It's simple, you know. Simple songs can be great. I mean, look at Boxcar Racer. Um, a lot of those songs were very simple, but to do a simple song, all the ingredients have to be fucking perfect, and when they're not perfect, it just makes it way more obvious that they're not perfect, and it was very obvious in this song, you know, I get that this is like demos and odds and ends and whatever, but I mean, like a minute of the song is just him doing like oohs and laws and das and la da das and whatever the fuck and it just that that also just makes me cringe a lot I, I can't listen to that song it just makes me sad not because the lyrics are sad but because I just feel like Tom's really lost it um, I mean you know the acoustic guitar itself sounds pretty good I mean the the actual riffs that he's playing are pretty basic you know there's nothing really interesting about him and um you know i get the story you know you know it, it's fine having a you know a, a story in your song and you know i get it i'm not gonna really knock on that but i feel like a lot of the elements of the song don't really reinforce the story and i feel like i don't know i just if he put, you know, that story where it's like his brother or whatever, you know, coming home to his mom and his family or whatever, I feel like if he put that, you know, with a completely different, like, instrumental section or whatever, it could be made to be a pretty good song and people would really appreciate it more. But in this setting, I feel like it's just kind of meh, you know, you, it's kind of forgettable. And the last song, Circle Jerk Pit. Terrible title. Um, I feel like his his voice sounds pretty bad in this song. I mean, worse than others. And I get he's trying to sound kind of raw and punk in the song, but he just sounds like his voice is shot. Um, it's definitely a forgettable song for me. 
Um, I, and like like I said with uh, Golden Showers, um, I feel like he's just really trying to reach out to those fans that he lost and say like, hey, come on, I, I can do punk stuff, you know, I'm, I'm still that cool guy from 2001, you know, and those really old style things that he's trying to do just aren't coming across very genuine to me, and I feel like it was the same type of thing with like Sum 41 and any number of bands that say, hey, this new album's gonna sound just like, you know, our old album, the one that you guys love, and, you know, they come out with the album, and, you know, you could try, you could tell that they were trying to get there, but it just falls completely flat, and it just feels like they were just trying too hard to be something that they were in the past and not just be who they are now, you know? So here are my overall notes just for, you know, the overall uh, feel I get for the whole album. I feel like it's rushed. I feel like a lot of the songs he wrote in, you know, an hour or less, you know, Circle Jerk Pit, I feel like he had written in, in an hour or, or half an hour, you know, pretty, pretty simple. Uh, same thing with New World, you know, that was really simple. Same thing with Visible Parade. Some of the other ones, I mean, I could definitely tell that there was some more going on, but that's because I feel like they were meant to be, you know, Angels and Airwaves stuff that I feel like he put a lot of time into and it just didn't make the cut for, you know, an older album. Okay, I didn't want that anyway. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, I feel like there's definitely a lot of Ava songs that it just that just weren't as good as the others. I definitely feel like there were a lot of weak bridges in the songs, and that's something Tom's been doing for a little while now. Every single song on Neighborhoods had a weak fucking bridge. It had nothing going on. They're like, you know what? We need a bridge in this song. And let's just make it some drums and um, some really, you know, boring bass and some really just like, you know, just drawn out chords and just no melodies and almost, n you know, nothing interesting going on. And that bugs the shit out of me. Bridges could be so fucking cool. And, you know, you could throw like a solo or you could, you could do a number of things. And Tom DeLonge just always fucking does the most boring bridges and it annoys the shit out of me and I don't know I just I hate that um, you know there were some parts in the whole album that I did like like I mentioned but there's just so many parts that just feel like filler like Invisible Parades where he's just singing you know word, words that aren't even words and you know just making sounds and melodies and whatever and they just sound like he's just trying to make filler and just make the songs you know last a little bit longer and i don't know i feel like he should have <clears throat> you know maybe spent a couple more months on this album made the songs not odds and ends and demos and it would have been you know a better overall album because i feel like by rushing it and by charging a fucking shitload, he he knows people will buy his albums. He knows it because there are so many kids that follow him, you know, and will follow him to their graves. And he will charge whatever the hell he wants, and he knows that he'll get it. And <clears throat> I mean, granted, you could have like just bought a CD or something for ten bucks or whatever, but he knows that he's gonna be able to just like make up packages of stuff that probably cost him close to nothing and sell them for a hundred dollars or more and it's ridiculous you know you know he throws he could throw his uh autograph on something and be like oh yeah that's that's worth a crap load of money and you know he, i feel like he's just taking advantage of his fans and i feel like he rushed it just to kind of spite mark and travis and <clears throat> I feel like he's really trying to keep the focus on him and, you know, not on Mark and Travis. I feel like he's just trying to keep people interested in him however he can. Like with the different songs where, like, you know, the obvious punk song and the obvious um, <clears throat> joke song and stuff like that. And 
overall, <laughs> the, the thing that really gets me is how he said um, that he just doesn't have time for Blink-182 and he doesn't have time to be uh, putting out new music and stuff like that because he has prior obligations. Then he's like, okay, here's my garbage. Here are my old demos and here are my you know, snippets of songs that never made it anywhere. Um, you know, here, here you go, whatever. And I feel like putting the time into something is well worth it. And I feel like if Mark and Travis and maybe Matt Skiba or whatever, I feel like they're not going to half-ass anything. They're really going to give their fans, you know, something high quality and something that they put a lot of hard work into. I feel like Tom didn't put a lot of hard work into this. I feel like he just kind of doesn't care anymore. I, that's the way I feel. I feel like he just cares about being an artist overall with, you know, his paintings and his movies and whatever the hell else he's doing because, I don't know, people just fucking love him. And I get it, you know, I was a humongous fan for a long time and, you know, I still got my Tom DeLonge guitars or at least inspired guitars over there and, you know, I get it, but, you know, this is a big eye-opener for me and I feel like, you know, for a lot of other people too and, you know, sometimes idols and, your, you know, your childhood idols, they don't last forever and it's unfortunate, but... Um, I don't know. What can you do? So, anyway, the uh, the album has got a couple decent parts in it. You know, there's some parts that, um, you know, I do like, and they do remind me of, like, the older Blink stuff and, you know, the parts that I really loved about Tom. But I feel like the Tom that we knew and loved is too far gone, and I feel like if we really want anything Blink-182 related or Blink-182 essence, we're just going to have to wait for Mark and Travis to do something. Maybe Plus 44 will come out with something. Maybe they'll do something with Matt from Alkaline Trio. I don't know. We'll just have to wait and see. So, anyway. Let me know what you think. I, like I said, I tried to be as unbiased as I really could. And, um, yeah. Leave me a comment. Let's see what you think. See ya.